Hey everybody, welcome back to Brown Table, and I wanted to do something a tad bit different this time. Talk about a movie that isn't very famous, but those who watched it usually love it. And that film is Buried, directed by Rodrigo Cortez and written by Chris Sparling. Buried, which stars Ryan Reynolds, received critical acclaim, almost entirely consisting of close-up shots and medium shots. Buried is an expertly directed film, which utilizes its claustrophobic setting to craft an eloquent, yet terrifying story. What the movie has is a limitation, and that's a limitation in setting. Now, limitations are ideas placed in a story which limit the way one can tell a story. Limitations in film, for example, can be the long takes in Birdman and Victoria, or the filming of entire movies in rare languages like Apocalypto. So here we go, a protagonist's journey in a story is mostly influenced by the supporting characters around the protagonist or the setting. Now here, the setting might be the most crucial plot element, as Paul Conroy, or Ryan Reynolds, is stuck inside a coffin with limited battery life and oxygen. The limitation this movie has is its setting, the setting of the story in a coffin. We don't exactly know where it is or how deep, but we never leave the coffin, ever. And that's what I love about the movie. The movie has limits placed on itself, but it handles those limits very well. The power the setting has over the film is its tightness and feeling of containment. To shoot inside a small space technically means that there shouldn't be establishing shots or wide shots which display the background, but there are. Very few. The fact that nearly the entire movie is framed in close-ups or medium shots means that whenever the camera cuts to a wide shot, showing Conrad in a small coffin engulfed in a void of darkness, it has greater impact. Due to the restrictive nature of the coffin and the lack of light, the camera has to be placed almost always on Conrad's face with the only available light source being a candle, or the blackberry he's given. The limitation, yet again, aids the movie, as it creates a visceral image and allows the viewer to see Reynolds' performance up close and personal. To keep the story moving quickly and to add suspense, stories usually employ a sort of timer, or something that gives the characters a certain amount of time to complete something. The script has a number of ticking clocks, the phone's battery power, the lighter's fuel, and the flashlight's batteries, etc. A feat that's accomplished thanks to the limited setting is that the movie's supporting cast is never seen. Other than one character who can be seen through a video, the rest of the performances are auditory, all being heard through Conrad's phone. This allows the viewer to invest themselves into the movie, have their minds wander and almost interact with the piece. Who are these people? What do they look like? Where are they? Providing little detail and having the audience fill in the gaps is a great creative decision, leaving the audience more invested in the story. This was a decision by Chris Sparling, the screenwriter. Due to financial struggle, the movie had to be contained to its one location, the coffin. But as the budget kept rising, and the ability to film in other locations was possible, he realized that the limited setting added to the film's overall aesthetic. What I think is the most powerful element Buried employs is its realistic tone and feel. The movie does not end on a high note, characters act very realistically. This is something that was important to Chris Sparling, as for the end, the movie tries to be real. If you're stuck in a coffin, buried in a desert with only hours to live and no way out, it's not very likely you'll get out. And the plot point of Mark White beautifully ties things together, with his name at first giving Conroy hope. Mark White. Who's Mark White? A kid from New Hampshire. Yes, he's alive. Where is he now? Home. Probably happy to be back at school. And eventually taking it away. I'm so sorry, what is, Paul. What is it? So sorry. What is it? It's Mark White. He brought us to Mark White. There is one powerful technique the movie employs, and that is the technique of squeeze and release. By Alan Palmer at Cracking Yarns, he notes, to build suspense, one needs to write escalating sequences, but these sequences can't just be increasingly getting more and more intense. There has to be a moment that breaks tension, letting the audience breathe and preparing them for what comes next. Still, all of these sequences have to work together to further the narrative and lead from one act to the next. The movie's filled with escalating moments, but the moments of release are when Conroy is told about Mark White, when Conroy says goodbye to his mom, when he makes a will and final testament, when he says goodbye to his wife. In between these are major moments which propel the story forward and add more and more suspense, but we can only feel the impact of these moments if we have a moment to breathe. When I first saw Buried in 2011, I left the film feeling pretty sick to my stomach. 
there isn't really any happiness in the movie. There isn't a moment where you just cheer and scream and shout and laugh. It really doesn't exist. But what got to me was the way the movie was presented. The story the movie tries to tell could have been done in so many different ways, with maybe multiple actors being shown and cutting back and forth between the coffin and the outside world. But the movie was crafted in a way that puts the spotlight on one character and his journey. And I think that's brilliant. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching this video if you've made it this far. I really do want to take the time here to say thank you to all my patrons, especially Jonathan Baldy and Peter Clark the writer. Seriously, thank you so much. And just so you know, I have a lot more content coming up. I know I've taken a very long break, life kind of caught up with me, but it's fine, I'm back, and I hope I'll see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you really liked it, please uh, subscribe. And if you actually really, really liked it, you can support my Patreon. Also, please, if you really liked this individual video, please like it, share it, and of course, comment on it. So thanks for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.